Donald, the, the, the last All-Ireland final back in 2018, you were obviously on the airwaves for ourselves, shouting and roaring and screaming on commentary duty. This time you're on the sideline. Obviously a major difference. Which is more enjoyable? Which is more nerve-wracking? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I suppose on the radio, you can you, you can let your emotion run loose, you know, and try and get maybe whoever's at home involved in the whole thing. But... Um, was on the sideline of a small bit of a different role. You have to be kind of stone cold and, you know, trying to view the game and then just make sure that we're all uh, ticking over nicely. And if there's any concerns or issues or anything, I feel that I can bring back to John on the sideline. Um, we just go down and, and uh, pass that on to him. You've played with a with a couple of them, obviously. You've watched others grow from from underage hurlers to to All Ireland winning hurlers in 2018, and, and gained so much more experience over the last couple of years. What has it been like this year working with this side and and helping to get this side back to the big stage in Croke Park? Yeah, like it, it was a big learning curve for me coming into to this setup. You know, they're probably into year three, um, into year four, nearly of uh, of this development of this bunch. So. Just to see them, um, I suppose the physique and and, and the, the speed that they move at, and 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 the whole setup of training and everything. You know, it took me uh, a couple of weeks to get to get used to that. But um, yeah, I've played with a few of them, and they're the exact same guys personally. As in, they're they're very driven and they want to do the best. And and this young group that came in with them are uh, are complimenting them. So look, I suppose as a group, you you can't question what they're trying to do. It's just. Um, I suppose just to keep it uh, hitting our Ireland semi-finals and finals as much as we can and thank God we're there on Sunday week. Obviously the, the Limerick public get very carried away with, with any sporting team that's going well. We, we saw it in 2018, we saw it last year. Declan mentioned it there, obviously a, a bizarre kind of a build-up to an All-Ireland this year with behind closed doors, everyone's at home, the Christmas trees are going up. Ha has it suited this group to, to have maybe a quiet build into this final? Well, you, you know yourself, Limerick uh, takes off, you know, great support, uh, as does a lot of other counties, but I suppose, I suppose we've, we just, we, we've been starved of, of these occasions for a long time and, um, you know, just to get a taste of it again in 2018 was brilliant. So, so that would no doubt be there if, if we weren't in the current uh, circumstance but I think in general I think and just not speaking for Limerick I think all inter-county players would be absolutely delighted to play in the championship this year and obviously the restrictions really start hitting home now as you get to the business end but um, look I think if they had a choice to play in Crow Park and in our Sunday week yeah, Declan. Just finally from, uh, just finally from me, uh, Donald. Um, I suppose back when you were calling that All Ireland in 2018, you called an awful lot of obviously Shane Dowling goals. I know you have a, a panel now and, a, and a, a great panel and plenty of finishers to come off the bench. But how much has he been missed this year in, in someone that that's such a natural goal scorer coming off the bench when you maybe want to kill off a game? Yeah, definitely. Look, Shane has been a has been a revelation when he came on in twenty eighteen, and obviously that injury has forced him to retire. But yeah, he look, he was one of those players, just just a man for the big day, and you turn up with many an important goal, none more than the Jalan final against Galway that year and the semi final against Cork that penalty. So look, this is the Golly. Sorry, John, you're breaking up a small bit at the end of that answer. For the next Can you hear? Yeah, the, 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 Spike is at the signal here, so he is. <laughs> um, yeah, well, what I was saying is, look, obviously he's been a huge loss to Limerick in, in, in the goal scoring stakes, you know, to have that ability to come in and, and, uh, and, and to get a goal when we needed one, you know. But um, obviously, it's up to the lads coming in. Is what I'm saying. You know, the new young the lads that are being uh, introduced to, to to take up that mantle. And we did create plenty of goals, scoring chances against Galway, and just didn't take them. And that's something we need to work on for for uh, two weeks time. Thanks, Donald. Donald. Yeah. Hi, Owen, Owen Ryan here. Will Aaron Hi, Glenn Owen. be okay? Be okay for next week, John? Well.
Aaron didn't train on Tuesday. Obviously, he took a, a heavy hit there the weekend. So we're hoping possibly to get him reassessed on Friday night and see how he is. But at the moment, I would say um, 50-50 is my understanding as of today. For the match? Uh, yes. Okay. Was it was it bruised ribs or, or what was it exactly? Uh, just see, uh, yeah, he took a heavy hit. And uh, I think he had uh, some breathing difficulties after. And uh, I suppose... Our doctor deemed him uh, necessary to, to head to the matter there, so they kept him overnight on precautions, so they were slightly concerned about him, but released the following day, which is great. So, um, and, and he came in to see us on Tuesday night, you know, but obviously didn't train, so hopefully um, we, we'll know more towards the weekend. Oh, just another question on Aaron as well. His hand, he, one of his fingers seemed to be heavily bandaged. Did he re re-break it after breaking it during that club window? He did. He went for a, an operation. Um, it was it was actually not as bad as first feared. It was a ligament injury, as far as I know. And I suppose he, he possibly should have taken a couple of weeks to 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 leave that recover. But he he really wanted to 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 get his fitness and get his hurling back as quick as possible. And he just basically played through the pain barrier. So yeah, he is playing with that uh, with that slight finger strap or whatever. But uh, <laughs> no no tougher man than himself. Mm. And I suppose that in itself, he's the sort of guy who'll want to play even if he's not a hundred percent. Given the player he is, yeah, he is. Like he, I, my, like he had a hamstring injury. Uh, uh, like you can't escape from the need early on the season, and I think he, just, he, he made this miraculous recovery from it. You know, which is a great sign of him. Like he does take a lot of punishment inside the edge of the square, so he's, he's well able to mind himself too, which is great. Yeah, and and the form of Limerick at the moment, maybe not even. Like obviously not scoring the goals you want, but the form in general, do you think it's where it needs to be, or can it jump up a bit more? That you'd go, yeah, that's exactly what we're looking for, and that's what the players are looking for. And then there's been other times in games where we haven't maybe uh, uh, maybe drilled home that that when we've been up that four or five points just to just to finish it off. So. Um, plenty to work on but at the same time I would say like we're after four really tough championship games you know in different conditions and thank God we've come out the right side of them so it's a good sign of the team maybe that we're, we're still expecting more but, but we are winning the game mm. and, and how well do you think Limerick and Watford know each other now after the Munster finally both have loads of footage to look at yeah <laughs> too much maybe you know um, it's important I suppose like that Maybe you don't. Yes, we do our analysis, and Watford will. And you, you know, you have to concentrate on yourself a lot as well. But I, I, I think actually that Munster final, um, it, it was very tactical, and um, I suppose we got really to see up close that Watford are all that has been spoken about them. And since you know, fast, energetic, uh, a game plan that they're all really buying into, and. You know, I suppose it opened everyone's eyes in 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 Crow Park last Saturday night when they did come back from. I think it was nine or ten points even down at one stage it was thirteen points overall. So, you know, we know their threats and you know, it's just something that we will work on over the next two weeks, but obviously trying to impose our, our game plan as well. Donald, there's not going to be any fans there, obviously, but you are allowed now to bring the full squad back into Crow Park. How much of a boost for you as a manager is that to have those extra players with you and a decent sized group to kind of travel up on the day? Yeah, I, I've heard John say this on numerous occasions. Like, you know, it's very important. Like, we have 10 guys that could not come into Crow Park uh, last, last weekend. And a lot of them are very close to breaking into that 26, you know, and it, it's a horses for courses situation. And there's been, uh, you know, a bit of a swing there in that, in that panel of 26 that we pick, and there's some going in and out. So, for them to be involved in match day, it's hard, you know, it takes, it does take the glass off a, off a victory, or even today, the month of the final there, it, it, it's tough. But just to get them up there, especially the younger lads, maybe they aren't breaking into that uh, 26 at the moment, to have them there for the game day experience is important as well. And listen, just talking about going up a gear in performance levels, is goals maybe the one thing missing from this team now that you'd be looking for? It possibly is one, you know, like we should be taking maybe a couple of more goal chances. Yes, we, we seem to create a lot more than we have been against Galway. We could have had maybe two anyway, if uh, speaking personally. But um, yeah, it's something. But there's other things like we hit some terrible wides against Galway and uh, like a lot of them were, were, we were actually doing the hard work and creating that 
that concentration in, in, in hitting that score um, didn't come off when we were up that four or five points. So that's something that we really need to, to, to nail for the next day for, if, or else uh, we'll pay the price against Watford.